I'm Shemaine. And I'm John. And we are the Tandem Team. Adventurers. And we are the Tandem Adventurers. Everybody, we're about to start a, another ride on the tandem bike on this beautiful day here in Florida. We're here at Crane's Roost Park in Altamont Springs and we are about to get going. Let's do this. Yeah. December 26th so it's been uh, not quite two months almost two months since we started and doing how many miles did we do in all so well far? that's interesting you'd ask because at the end of today by the time we get back home we will have over 800 oh, since we good. started we should be I mean, like around I think around 810 miles or something like that since our first ride so that's yeah. pretty good Yet when I um, originally brought up the idea about riding a tandem bike, I was pretty much um, a little bit nervous and apprehensive about riding the yeah, tandem bike. Yeah, I know bike. you were. And it sat there for approximately um, several weeks before I decided, well, you know what, maybe we should get in it and, you know. <laughs> Why were you apprehensive? Well, about five years ago, as you know, um, I had a fall and basically... I was riding behind you and fell over and bumped my head and pretty much got a little bit nervous about getting back okay. on a bike again. Okay. And then um, I thought about it after basically I started walking in my neighborhood and I started thinking, you know, biking wouldn't be so bad again to actually get back out there and do some cycling. All right. And uh, basically now I'm really loving it because, um, as I mentioned to you, I can actually make this a lifestyle. Cool. And I'm really... That's awesome. Thoroughly so what is it, it? what is it that made you, like, change your mind going from being apprehensive about riding to now you're like gung-ho let's do this all the time so once i got on the bike um it really wasn't that bad i really started liking it and um you being a very good captain i felt pretty <laughs> pretty Thank um uh, confident that you would get us where we're going and i had a lot of faith in you that you would, you know do a good job and the more i ride with you i find out that you you're pretty good I mean, so a few times it. you were a little bit crazy. <laughs> In what way? <laughs> well, you know, crossing the roads and stuff where uh, traffic were coming in both directions. Okay. Um, I had to tell you, slow down a little bit. Okay. Um, really back there holding my heart because <laughs> I was, you know, afraid. I think that's but probably because you just weren't used to riding on the roads or riding on a bike like that but, exactly but you quickly adapted and now mm -hmm. it's like second nature yeah i remembered in the beginning 
while we were riding, I tell you, no, I don't want to go on the road. And now it's a, so now much we're, better. Now we're riding on like yes. really busy roads and stuff. Yes. But you notice there's, there's like no bumps and the crossings are usually safer. Mm -hmm. And the thing I don't like about, like, I don't ever ride on sidewalks, as you know, because motorists coming out from side roads they don't always see you because they're not looking on the sidewalk exactly. they're looking out in the road for oncoming cars mm -hmm. then sidewalks have a lot of bumps they got a lot of debris sometimes broken glass or whatever and it's just not a good experience so. right i'm really enjoying myself having fun doing this yeah having a lot of fun so what have you since you started this whole tandem riding thing as a stoker what have what have you learned or you know, anything has surprised it's you? Really, you know, getting out there and seeing the different scenes, and um, especially right now we're in this forest, Seminole Forest, and it's really very beautiful. And in, I enjoy, you know, nature and really liking this. And um, I've also learned one thing that really I can push myself to any limit now because I can, you know, I didn't really realize I have it in me to really pedal that hard and push a lot of times people think that we're not doing anything in the back but let me tell you i'm pedaling i could tell i, I can am. feel i can know i can sense and i can feel like when you're slacking off when you're pedaling hard when you're just kind of going like moderately i can i can tell because like for one the speed of the bike speed the bike's traveling and then i can it's like I compare that against to like how hard I'm having to pedal and work up front. So if, in other words, if we're not going very fast and I feel like, man, I'm pushing really hard and we're not getting anywhere, that's how I know you're slacking. Yeah. But usually, usually I think we're, we're going like at a moderate to moderately high effort mm -hmm. and we're going pretty good. But then all, all, now and then all of a sudden I'll be going along and I feel like it's like a surge, a surge, like. Like for people that are ever driven a turbocharged car or or for any of you viewers that have ridden motorcycles with like a two stroke engine, like a tuned two stroke engine, you'll know that like when you start out going, it's like you start accelerating and then and it's going, it's going, it's going. But when that engine gets into its efficient, most efficient RPM range, or like in the case of a turbo car, when the turbo kicks in. That's the best way I can describe like how it feels on the bike. Cause when she really starts to like sprint and put put forth that extra effort, I can feel it. it's like we'll be going along and all of a sudden it's like this surge of power. It's like, let's go. <laughs> it's it's really cool. It's really good. Yeah, too. it's really good. Um, I wanna ask you a question. Okay. What is the difference now with you riding a single bike versus riding a tandem bike? How has that improved your ability it's to It's definitely improved. To ride. Um, well, as you know, s since the beginning of the year, I think I've only ridden my mountain bike like three times, or three, maybe four times, because we've been riding this thing so much. And the, the three times that I've gotten on my mountain bike, the first thing is it felt weird. Like, because I get used to steering and controlling mm -hmm. this bike, which is like, what, 10 feet long. Mm -hmm. So it's like driving a bus. You know, exactly. it's literally like driving a bus. Yeah. And then I get on the on the mountain bike, because the my, mountain bike's half the length. Mm -hmm. And like, whoa, this thing is like really nervous, like to turn. Right. So that's the first thing. And of course, I get over that within like five minutes. I get mm -hmm. used to how it feels again. Um, the other thing too, of course, it's like half the weight of That's this right. bike mm -hmm. so i feel like it's more responsive mm -hmm. it's not it's a little bit faster in some areas and then some areas it's probably a little bit slower um like sustained top speed i could probably go a little bit faster mm -hmm. on the mountain bike um it definitely responds quicker like if i'm going say at 19 miles per hour and I need to pick it up to 22 miles per hour, mm -hmm. I can get to 22 miles per hour a lot quicker exactly. on the mountain bike. But to answer your questions, like how have I improved? Mm -hmm. I feel like riding the tandem has helped me a lot because it's just a different 
feeling, even from like a pedaling mm -hmm. perspective, I feel like I'm constantly pushing against more resistance, more so than I am on mm -hmm. the on the mountain bike. Mm -hmm. And the mountain bike again, if I if I like put forth that extra effort all of a sudden to pick up speed, the mountain bike responds, mm -hmm. you know, and it'll keep responding as long as my legs can keep pushing at that effort. The tandem's different in that when I push forward like mm -hmm. that, it doesn't respond. If we're going along at a certain speed and like I just start pedaling harder to increase that speed, um, or maybe we might be like approaching a, a slight hill and I have to give that extra effort. The tandem doesn't respond to that extra input. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of like a loaded truck, so to speak. And um, so I feel like I'm pushing against more resistance, but I'm pushing against more resistance all the time. If I ride at the, a moderate effort on the mountain bike, say I could ride at... 16, 17, maybe 18 miles per hour. Mm -hmm. But if I ride at that same effort on the tandem, then it's going to be a lot slower. I'll probably be doing like 13 and a half miles per hour. So the fact that I'm constantly like trying to maintain that higher effort and constantly pedaling against resistance, it's definitely like improved my fitness. I feel like I have more strength in my legs, mm -hmm. more power in my legs. So when I get back on the mountain bike, I feel like I'm flying. It's, okay. uh, it's, I definitely feel like I've gotten faster because of it. Okay, we just got here at historic Markham Park in Seminole County. Uh, we just got here a second ago and Shemaine just took a bathroom break. Yep. How's it going? Oh, really good. I'm having a good time. It's a beautiful day. And one other thing is, well, we just broke a spoke on the rear wheel of the tandem uh, um, right here. And so I'm going to have to replace that right now because I don't want to continue riding it like that. Our bike is a great bike. I like it a lot. But one of the things that I'm kind of annoyed about is the, the wheels. Uh, the wheels seem to have been built with very cheap quality spokes. And lately we've been breaking a spoke on nearly every ride. So today I brought tools and a couple of spare spokes, you know, anticipating that this would happen. I think eventually in the very near future what I'm going to have to do to alleviate this problem is is rebuild the entire wheel with higher quality spokes. Um, that's become a big problem and it's kind of a nuisance to you know have a broken spoke happen every time on a ride. Um, I've already replaced either four or five spokes I think on the rear wheel and two on the front so it is what it is. Where do you see us in the future and as far as upgrade or on the bike what do you well plan to we do? got this bike of course it's our first tandem no bike problem. i mean i've been riding for i've been riding mountain bikes for 20 years and of course you're all pretty much new at this so we got this bike kind of as like a test but kind of like, it's a kind of an entry level model um i mean tandem bikes can get really expensive and I didn't want to really like you know spend exactly. a lot of money on a on a new bike and then find out oh then we're not going to use it it's just going to end up sitting there so we got this one it was you know relatively inexpensive compared to some of the other ones but we found out that this it's been a great bike we're loving it the only issue I have with it is with the wheels I mean it's got some spokes. some cheap spokes in the wheels that keep breaking on us. Um, other than that, the bike is just absolutely fantastic. It's a, it's a Raleigh companion. Um, but I can definitely see an upgrade in the not-too-distant future. Um, I don't know. Probably something of a road bike model to do road rides, but I'd also like a mountain bike model with mm -hmm. suspension exactly. because I can see us doing a lot more off-road stuff. Mm -hmm where it's going to get bumpy and you know we need more aggressive tires and more and suspension to handle handle bumps and stuff 
stuff like that. So I can definitely see us get an up upgrade. together all I have to do now I have to put, put the wheel back on the bike but also have to uh, basically true the wheel make sure it's straight in the line so I'm going to do that by putting it back on the bike and uh, using the rear brakes use, use the brakes as a gauge basically to get the wheel straight and true took me a couple minutes to replace the spoke and tension it and make sure it's true and straight so it's not rubbing the brakes or the wheel is not wobbling or anything. I'm going to just pack up my tools right there on the ground. Good. One thing, one thing I've noticed too that I'd, I'd like to mention is, I mean, 
we've only been riding the bike just shy of two months. And I remember our first ride, it was a nighttime ride, and I think we only went like about 14 miles on I it. I remembered. Mm -hmm. And our average speed was like 14 miles per hour, which... Gradually we it's started not, bringing it it's up. It's not that that bad, but it's not that fast either. But within within the space of two months, our average speed, we've been able to increase it by over two miles per exactly. hour. Exactly. So we're so like on our on recent rides, we're doing like over 16 miles per hour average, which is not fast for a lot of people, especially people that are talking about riding on single, used to riding single bikes. But for a tandem, I think that's pretty good. And we're improving every time. Fitness has improved and... Also, being able to ride in sync, that's really important because you could have like two really strong riders on a tandem, but if they're not able to ride in sync, then... And right now, good. we really don't have the proper shoes yeah. right now. That's so. the next thing. We're going to be upgrading our pedals here really mm -hmm. soon. That's going to give us a lot more efficiency and a lot more performance. What do you like best about the whole tandem riding experience? You know what? It's great riding at you. I mean, we get Aww. to do something together. And, That's the whole um, point. Even recall one woman talking to us and telling us that. Um, <laughs> oh, I remember that. What did she say? She said it was so romantic. Yes. <laughs> so it's really great being together and riding together. Uh -huh. Where you're not out there doing your own thing, now I'm with you. Exactly. So that's the good thing about it. I especially like riding in the night because you um, do? it's a lot cooler. Yeah. And um, less traffic. Less traffic. Met a lot of good people along the way. Yeah. You know, yeah. A lot of doggies. <laughs> a lot of dogs on some of the roads and the trails. We got a lot of people looking at us because I guess it's not every day they see a tandem bike. Okay, so what do you like least about it? <laughs> you know, let's see getting started motivated to go out yeah. but once i get out there it's yeah. really a breeze and i love it in corners uh, in the beginning i didn't like corners but now it seems to you be like pretty the good sensation yes. of leaning over and going mm -hmm. that's the that's a so fun now part I do like yeah. it. one thing i've learned in terms of like handling the bike is like you got to be more finessed and gentle with maneuvering it exactly like for example on a single bike like with my mountain bike like I can swerve stuff and like if I can come into a corner real quick and just dive into a turn or or if there's something in the road that I need to observe I can kind of just swerve around it no big deal not so with the mountain but with the tandem I'm sorry um, because with the weight of an extra rider on the back it's like I kind of got to ease into a turn and then I can't if we're if we're have the bike leaned over, say for example, to the left, I can't make a sudden pitch Great. to the right like I can with a single bike because either the bike's not going to respond, or I might lose control and crash. Mm -hmm. Or the third case is you could possibly get thrown off the back because that sudden pitch. So that's exactly. something I've learned that I can't do. Mm -hmm. Whoa! Another spoke roll. No, that was the, the gear changes. Oh, my bad. One thing else that I've, I've learned too is about communication. And Oh, yeah, let's by, talk about that with the bumps and... But yes, by okay. communication I mean like, you know, when I'm riding my mountain bike, my single bike, it's like, yeah, I see bumps up ahead or... You know, I'm going to make a left turn or right turn or whatever the case may Sometimes be. Sometimes you forget to I just, mention it. You know, I just, go, I just go through the turn or go over the bumps or whatever. But on the tandem, man, it's a whole different ball game because you can't see really if there's something immediately ahead. And I've learned that I have to call that out all the time. You know, at first, I guess not being used to the tandem or something or having a rider behind me, I took for granted that, yeah, we'll just go over a bump, no big deal. But it seems like the amount of shock you get up your back, being on the back. But listen to this. Because I know exactly where we're riding and 
what route we take in. I kind of get used to the bumps now because um, I know exactly where we're going to be going. So, but I've that's I've had to find I've had to learn that I've got to basically call everything out, especially like bumps, or if I'm going to make a sudden turn, or if I'm going to come to a stop for any reason. You know, things that I normally wouldn't call out because there would be no need to on a single bike. I find myself now having to really verbally call it out so you in the back know what's going on. Mm -hmm. And that's been really important. Otherwise, you might we might go over a bump Fine. and you'll get j jacked up in the back. Or we'll stop pedaling or whatever and your foot will come off or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, you know, something weird will happen like that. So I found the communication has been... Um, it's something that I've kind of had to learn, but we, we've kind of got this communication system down now, so we've got that figured out. That's, that's been pretty cool. fastest we've gone on that thing so far um, i'm not sure i think that would be we recorded it right down mm -hmm. close to home. 32 we've done 32 miles per hour we've had we've had three different occasions where we've gone it's actually been over 32 mm -hmm. just short of 33 of course each time has been down a hill but we've been able to do that speed and hold the speed for quite a bit so that's cool i like i like to go mm -hmm. fast got to the Seminole State Forest we just entered here a few minutes ago. This is our first, it's not my first time riding here. But it's, it's actually uh, mine. Shermaine's first time and it's our first time on a tandem bike. It's so actually... This is, this is our first, uh, I guess you could call it mini adventure going off-road in the dirt. It's not like we're riding trails or anything, but we're riding on some gravel, unpaved roads, so kind of... Uh, training and practice for our upcoming bike packing trip. Did you discuss that with me? <laughs> uh, I've been discussing it with Shermaine. She's a little <laughs> bit apprehensive about going, but we're going. So this is what it looks like right now, and um, I'm actually enjoying this. So, Listen to this, guys, and he's also planning a, some back Packing. Bike packing. We're going bike to be doing a packing, bike packing trip. And I told trip. him I'm not ready. <laughs> and he's been after me. We're going to this so, trip right here in the Seminole Forest. I want to give myself some time. In about three weeks, we're, we're coming not back. We're do that. We're doing it. Don't listen to um, that. Basically, gonna, I want to give myself some time. We're going to load up the bike there. with the tent. And he's the, got all these great plans the about air taking us. Out on these well, that, that bike goes, packing events, that, that and I'm goes not back, ready. That goes back into what you're saying about like, what are your plans for the future? You're talking about upgrading the bike, but part of it is doing stuff like this. We're going to be doing gradually longer and longer rides as we get better and better on it. Of course, but um, um you're going to have and, to. And we're going to be doing stuff. more adventurous <laughs> rides because we are the tandem adventurers. So today's ride is kind of like, a, I guess, a trial or a test about you know coming off on, on these dirt roads and mm -hmm. stuff because this is the very spot that we're going to be coming in three weeks we're the only, the only difference between idea, that, but the not. only difference is we're going to have a tent we're going to have an air mattress and some food and stuff so we can spend the night up here and that's it and then we're going to go home the next day
All right, we just got here at the uh, this little picnic area at the Seminole State Forest. And how many miles did we rode today? Today, so I haven't checked it to be honest with you, but I think it's we should be around 25, okay. between 20 and 25. Mm -hmm. I'm Shemaine. And I'm John. And we are the Tandem Team. Adventurers. And we are the Tandem Adventurers. All right, so you're ready to hit the road. We've got uh, we've got a 20-somewhat mile ride back. Definitely. And it's getting late in the day and we didn't bring our lights. Head back home now. Um, on the road. Had a beautiful day. Right now, how much degrees is it? Right uh, I don't know. It should be, if I had to guess, about probably about 80. So we're having some really good weather. 85, right now. 87, somewhere around there? Yeah. It's really nice. Anything you've learned other than what you've mentioned already? No? No, not really. Okay. Smelling farts. <laughs> Smelling farts? <laughs> I haven't farted on you, have I? Yes. When? <laughs> That's going in the video. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs>